the reasoning behind changing from a club to a day ticket venue? How you catch them, I would put them in the Thanks for checking out my video. In today's video, you join me and Donnie Lee on a 24 hour social event down at Wixty Carp Lake. Well, hello everyone. Sort of in midst of packing, uh, setting up, sorry. Got my gear on the floor and bivvies up. But we're down at Wixty Carp Lake for a social event run by Wixty Carp Lake. Here for 24 hours, me and Donnie Lee, there's seven or eight other lads fishing. So yeah, this should be a good laugh. Hopefully a few fish come out. Um, I'm doing different tactics. I'm not going all out carp fishing. I brought my float rod, some ground bait, my feeder rod. I've got my carp gear just in case, but yeah. Initial tactics are float fishing. I'll finish sorting out and get my rods in the water. Um, yeah. Starts at 12 till 12 tomorrow. There's barbecue, a few beers, a bit of social with the lads. So it should be a good crack. So yeah, fingers crossed we get something. And uh, I'll just spin you around and show you the lake. So yeah. Hopefully, it's really weedy venue. It's not easy. But I'm in what they call Jake's swim. So yeah. Fingers crossed, we can get some fish. See you later. Well, hello everyone. It's half 12, I think. Finally fishing now. Got two rods set up for Donnie Lee yeah. on carp tactics. And I've got one on a feeder helicopter system down in my right margin. And then using the float on the lift method straight out in front of me, I don't know about three or four rod lengths out so hopefully we can get something using a sweet corn and worm combo with pellet and hemp scattered around it fingers crossed we can get something fingers crossed Donnie Lee can get something so yeah I've been already plagued by a bloody duck but that's what happens isn't it so fingers crossed dude let's see if we can go and get something whoop, whoop. see you soon well, hello everyone. <clears throat> it's now oh, two o'clock in the afternoon. I was fishing out at about three, four rod lengths out on the lift method. I've brought it in now to about half a rod length out, maybe a rod length. See if that produces anything. I'm not fussed whether it's a roach, rud, perch. But as we all know, once you get them feeding, chances are of encouraging something larger to come in is better. I've also raked the swim, so hopefully that can produce something. So, until anything else happens, I'll see you soon. Well, hello. It's now four o'clock in the afternoon, and I've managed to pick off a few small roach. Missed a couple of decent bites, but there's still plenty of time. I've only been here for four hours, and I'm here till 12 o'clock tomorrow. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed, something happens. Time for the Barbie in a couple of hours. And Ollie, the leaseholder, or co-lease owner, co-founder of the club, um, has just been round, had a little chat, and uh, informed me that the barbecue will be about six. So yeah, wicked. Time for some food. So until something fishy happens, or when we're around there having a bit of a social, See you soon. So 
phone, he tried to charge his phone off with the moped battery and it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> what, the phone or the battery? Were you up three at the time? What did you want? What did you want? You only wanted the light? You know when you plug a phone into a motor battery, you're not supposed to react the fuck out of the way. You're doing quicker. Where's the fast charger? What I do with my phone is plug it into the wall. You know, that charger is about to type C. How did you? Well, evening people. It's 20 to 9 now at night. Barbecue's finished. Social. A few beers. Good laugh. Back in the swim now. Float fishing. Still with an isotope on. So I can see me float. Hopefully I can bag something and put Donny Lee's rods back out. So yeah, hopefully we can get something, eh mate? Ah, uh, you can't see me, John Cena. So yeah. No one's had nothing yet. Fingers crossed. There's plenty of time. So, yeah, I've had little fish. So until something happens, see you soon. Well, hello everyone. It is half past nine at night. And the first Wix D Carp social fish has just come out. Jake, who is sponsored by Wix D Carp Lake, and uh, yeah, just had one. 13 pound. So I'll uh, stick a picture of that in now. I don't think anyone else has had anything yet. So yeah, hopefully something else comes out. Hopefully for me too, or Donnie Lee. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So yeah, if anything else happens, I'll let you know. Bye. Morning everyone. Nothing through tonight. I had a run about three o'clock in the morning, but didn't materialize to anything. So, got up this morning, it's now 6 o'clock-ish. Oh no, 7 o'clock, I've been up for a little bit longer. Not had anything yet. But, um, Jake, over there, um, the Wixdeed Carp Lakes, sponsored angler, he's just had another one, that's two for him now, at £14. I'll uh, put the footage in at the end of this. But yeah. Let's get fishing, hopefully I can get something. See you soon. He's into one at six o'clock in the morning. Let's see if we get this one in or if he gets Done. Huh? I wasn't looking, I was looking over there. <laughs> it definitely sounded like it. Yeah. Great big reed bed just there. That's where this fish is coming from. It's like you'll be walking home with it all, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I think off any minute. It's a great big bit of weed, like. Ah, uh, the fish is still attached. So far. 
Yeah. Don't jinx it, Riggs. You right, you want me to do it? Thank or someone? Right, it's on. Right, it is. He's over there. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I got wee bed I'm on about. Great big ball of weed on the end of that. Still on, mate. Let's get that out of the way. And she's in. Lovely. Nice one, Jake. Good way, nice <laughs> yeah. Nice one for you, mate. Not nice that I'm happy for you, but I'm not that happy. No. <laughs> and it's six o'clock. It's nice, mate. Nice fishy. Fish care and must down here at Wicks Deed Carp Lake. Not trying to put you under pressure or anything with video in you. Well done, Jake. Awesome. Well, I've changed over to the feeder rod now. On a maggot feeder. See if that produces anything. Still not add anything other than a few tiddlers. Donny Lee's not had nothing either. So fingers crossed. I get something a bit bigger than a tiddler. But I've still caught fish. Just not a carp or a tench. Ayo, it's fishing for you, isn't it? But at least uh, some fish have come out for the social. Let's say Jake's had two. I don't think anyone else has had anything. And it's brekkie time soon. I think Ollie and uh, Mick are coming down to um, do breakfast for us all. Sweet! I'll be joining more of these socials. <laughs> So yeah, until something else happens, see you too. Wow, walking around now. That's breakfast. Yeah. I'm pulling a Their breakfast. They're supplying breakfast. <laughs> Him and John Cena. I love John Cena. So yeah, we're on the way. We've found a lake, wheeled in. Time for a spot of brekkie and a bit more of a social. Only a few more tiddlers for me. Nothing for Donnie Lee. No one else has had anything since Jake had one. So, uh, there's still a bit of time. And then it's time to pack up and... Uh, I think they're going to do a little bit of a presentation at the end because this is the first 
Wix D Carp Lake social. So yeah, it's been good fun so far. A few laughs when we were out around there having a barbecue, a few beers, putting the world to rights. So yeah, I'm gonna stop waffling and uh, get around and get some brekkie. Well, hello everyone. It's now about 11 o'clock, I think. Half past 11. And uh, breakfast is all done, bit of a social, bit of a chin wag. Stuck my feeder rod back in for a little bit. Donnie Lee was doing John Cena again, wasn't he? And uh, so yeah, see if we can nab a fish. Um, Ollie and Mick are gonna come round in a bit. We'll have a chat. Um, about the lake and maybe any future plans anything like that so until they come around or if anything fishy happens between now and then and now we'll uh, see you soon um first order of business i've got a question for you yeah because obviously i was a member here when it was just edge angling edge angling club yeah, yeah. And then you change to Wixty Carp Lake. What's the reasoning behind changing from a club to a day ticket venue? Yeah, so I think the last interview we had, um, the weather was considerably yes, very wet, considerably rainier than it, than it is <laughs> on this occasion. I've spent probably a good hour telling you about how we were going to be a club for the rest of time um, and how it was. Uh, we had no intentions of turning it into a carp water. Yeah, and we've done. Um, the equivalent of a major government U-turn on all of that, really. Um, opportunity, really, is the uh, is, is is the main word there. Um, in five years as a club, um, we'd taken this lake about as far as we could take it as a club. So we've had we've had a great five years. You know, we had a really really good time. We've got a fantastic membership base. Some really really good guys. Everyone's mucked in. You know, everyone's. I'd say two thirds of the the membership base of you know have improved the water through through help or time yeah. or contributions and things like that, um, and we were really really grateful of that. So when we were renewing the lease for here, we were put in a in a not put in a situation, but put in a in a, in a spot where we could go one or two ways. We could continue as we were, and when you're a club. You know, you can only ever command quite a, a small amount of, of capital. You know, you can only take so much money yeah. on people, and it's only it's only one lake we've got. So, you know, we had a membership base of 65 people, which is quite a lot for a you know a sort of between eight and ten peg lake. Um, that was at its capacity. So, there's only so much revenue that you can take from from that, and then there's only so much you can do to the water. So, we found ourselves in a situation where we had the opportunity to take it on as a as a commercial entity. Uh, which meant that we could actually invest so for the first time we we're in a position to spend some proper money on fish stock yeah um, rather than bits and pieces that, which is the best we could manage as, as a club so we'd we got as much out of it as we could as a club shall we say yeah. you know everyone who joined for the tench everyone who joined for the pike and most of those guys had filled their boots they were happy with, with, with what they had um, and it sort of peaked out where it was you know the maximum size of the tench had got to where it is the biggest size of the pike had got to where it is the anglers who wanted to target those species had sort of reached its peak and were starting to tail off so for us it was it was an opportunity when we were renewing the lease with, with the park to say right what haven't we got around here and what we haven't got is a decent carp water you know there are there are other waters that aren't too far away but in Kettering itself and open access day ticket carp water is something that nobody's that nobody's yeah. got and most of our members in fairness whenever we've polled them over the last five years have asked for more carp most of them have asked for more carp you know and um and we basically said all right here's our chance to do it so we we got some some money together we 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 now we we run this as a business now um we've invested money in there which enabled us to put some some decent carp in um and open up the access to everybody to come here and have a go so we've we've, t we've gone down a different road with it there's things we miss about being a club you know a, a club is a, is, a, is a great bunch you know it's great to have that that, that sort of bunch of guys who are all invested um, from a, a passion 
you know, side yeah. of things rather than the money side of things. And going down the business route does feel a little bit sort of dirty at first, but it enables you to do more. It enables you to do so much more. So we can give more back to the local angling now because we're able to, to, to get a bit more money you know, through the coppers. So that's, yeah, it was just an opportunity that came at the time it did. We decided to go this way rather than the way the way that we've we've been going, and yeah, new challenges, um, new things to deal with. But, uh, but first and foremost, greater opportunity to provide more for the local angle. Yeah. So obviously, you mentioned when you took it on, you put some more stock in. I'll try and find some photos or speak to yourself and get some photos mm. or footage of said restocking. But is there plans for any more? Any bigger fish, anything like that? Yeah, so we I'll talk you through the, the, the stocking we've done, first of all. So we've sourced um, some carp from, uh, from a, a, fish, uh, a fish farm called Lana Springs, um, and they have their own emperor strain of carp. Um, absolutely, absolutely cracking fish, really, really. Um, I mean, when you start, um, one of the things we've learned over the years is there's fish farms and there's fish farms, you know, and, and I think it's like a lot of things in life you settle on one where you you like the the product you like the people who run the farm and you like the service and we've sort of settled on on land springs and we we've got some great fish from there so we haven't gone mad with the stocking um we stocked but it's a you know it's a four acre lake we've got here so it's not huge and um, we probably already had between sort of 40 and 60 carp in here and we've added another 35 fish to it but of those 35 10 of them were over 20 pound um, and all the rest of <coughs> our two were were mid doubles. So we've purposely put some bigger fish in, but not loads of them. Yeah. We, we didn't have any intention on turning this into a five and seven pound fisher chuck fishery. Nothing wrong with that, but it's not, that's not, um, that's not what we're appealing to. And there's plenty of places where you can go and do that around here if you, if you want to, you know, we, this, is, uh, this is somewhere where you can come and get your, can we get stuck in, um, perhaps get your first 20 under your belt or get good at catching 20s whilst we wait for a couple of these to turn into 30s which shouldn't take too long but we want sort of fewer bigger fish that's yeah. the that's the that's the idea so we started off with 35 this this year as to what we're going to do this winter into next one we haven't got any solid plans yet but probably once we've got this winter out of the way we'll look to probably stock between 10 and 15 bigger fish each year and then just sort of constantly be topping up the 20s that are growing into 30s because these fish are piling on the weight already. Uh, I mean, the fish in here, before we were a carp fishery, they were putting on five pound a year just eating the naturals in this venue. Now we've got naturals and decent pellet and boilie going in. So they are, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be getting bigger yeah. all the time. So hopefully we'll have grown ourselves a 30 within a, within a couple of years or so. And then we'll top up the, the high high doubles and 20s behind it. So we don't ever want to end up with a massive head. We want to make sure there's plenty of room for these fish to keep getting bigger and bigger. Would you want to keep it more of a way from a runs water and more of a a tricky sort of, not tricky, but you know, yeah. where you've got to put a bit of effort in to... And this is, and it, that's a great question because this is one of the key differences between running as a club, running a club and, and running a commercial venture. You know, you've got to strike that balance between keeping anglers happy and also providing something that's that's decent and, and unique you know it, it's this has always been a tricky water and it, it, it can be you know we have challenges with the weed you know we have you have days where you think where are all the fish in here you know and then other days where they're climbing up the line but yeah the the plan is always for it to be somewhere that's a bit of a campaign water somewhere you can come and spend the time get stuck in probably blank the first couple of three times and then once you've once you've unlocked the code you know, you, yeah. you start getting into some fish. So that that's that's what we're we're aiming at. We're we're not looking to turn it into into a run water. I don't think we could, if I'm honest with you. Um, it's the, the nature and the layout of the lake. I, I don't think would ever. I don't think would ever turn into. I don't think would ever be that easy. Is the wrong word. Run waters can be diff, can be difficult at times, yeah. can't they? But uh, I don't. I don't think we'd ever. And and, and again, with 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 your investment, you know, you can either buy lots of smaller carp, or you could buy a few bigger ones. Um, and if you buy lots of smaller carp, you've got to wait quite a few years before you've got any bigger ones. So you're only going to be appealing to people who want to, perhaps who are new to carp fishing or who want to go and catch lots and lots of fish, um, rather than appealing to people who want to get stuck in for a season, you know, buy an annual pass, buy the monthly passes and, and sort of get stuck in for the, for the long game, you know. And, and again, from a commercial point of view, you've got to decide which way you want to go with them. Yeah. It's a very different consideration to running 
running a club and look it's our first year running a, a carp lake as a business so there'll be lots of things we'll probably do differently if we can start again but yeah for now our our aim is to is to appeal to the guys who want to sort of get stuck in for a you know for a long time you know join for the season be, become part of the part of the um part of the club if you like you know although only in in, uh, in yeah, the community yeah exactly yeah and, and get sort of stuck in from from that angle so that's that's how we that's how we've pitched it okay you, you also pitched. you touched on the weed yeah now anyone that knows this lake or, or walks around it because it's attached to the park yeah will know it is very weedy what are your plans with obviously not completely removing it mm. one that takes away some of the, the difficulty aspect yeah, of yeah. it but what's your aim on to tackle yeah, the, the weed's weed. been particularly naughty this year. I think it waited until um, five years as a club where it played up a little bit, but this year it really went for it. Um, when you know, I went to bed one night in in April uh, this year. Got came down here the following morning. It's like a lever had gone, and all the weed had just gone. Pfft. And uh, yeah, as I say, I think it waited until we were we opened as a day ticket to make it so that hardly any of the lake could be fished at all. It was an absolute nightmare. So this year in particular, the surface weed was just, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, we've, we've spent hours and hours and hours dredging it all off the surface through various different means. Some of it mechanical, I've some seen of your, it just, your boat just, you made. Yeah, that's, I mean, it looks like something out of Mad Max, but it's actually, um, it's actually quite effective. <laughs> actually quite effective. Uh, the poor little four horsepower engine on the back didn't agree with me. You know, that, was, that was going like the clappers are just about just about had enough but yeah it's been a really really bad weed and i think a lot of lakes have suffered with the weed this year we had a very mild winter um very very warm and wet early uh, wet probably doesn't have much of a make much difference to um to the to the weed in uh, in a lake but uh, it was it, by all accounts it was, it was perfect conditions for the weed to just take over so we really really struggled with that and i'll be honest we, we lost revenue as a result we had a lot of anglers who came down who just simply couldn't you know we, we couldn't clear the weed fast enough than it was replacing itself in order for people to actually get a peg so there was only two or three pegs open at one point so it really sort of turned yeah. us back a bit but with that we've learned various means now of mechanically removing the weed we've learned a lot about when to do it how to do it um, so going forward now um, the, the long-term plan for the weed management is, is is just going to be the basics really so come the autumn we're gonna we're gonna perform a, a, a mechanical cutting of the weed um, we've actually built ourselves a, a nice big um, pontoon boat now and, and the park have kindly contributed a, a nice big engine for that so we'll have the power to get around yeah. there now and actually cut it all there's no point doing it this time of year because as soon as we've done it it'll be back one thing we've learned about we, and we already knew it but sometimes you know things but you have to do them before you actually take them seriously yeah. and you know we were collecting weed in and literally a week later it was like we hadn't been here at all and that's five guys here for an entire weekend giving up their time and then a week later all their efforts been in vain so we've got to do that in the autumn so we're going to we're going to do that in the late autumn we're going to cut it we're going to collect it and then we're going to um come come spring next year we originally planned to get blue lake dye in, in there now we did try that this year and it just doesn't work in this lake. It doesn't work in some lakes. Um, I don't understand all the reasons. I think the amount of weed we've already got in here means a lot of it just settles in that in the bottom. And every now and then you you bring your rig in and it's and it's bright blue because you found a pocket of where the dye has yeah. landed. You know, so arguably we could use it if we get rid of all the weed first. But we do have quite a high flow through rate on this lake as well. The inlet comes in at five or six liters a second, so we must be soaking away and spilling out at a, at a, at a similar similar amount so if that's the case we're going to be topping that up every couple of weeks and yeah. it's just not going to be commercially viable to do so so we're going to we're going to cut it we're going to collect in what we can um, we're going to use the old uh, barley um, bales which i thought was a bit of a myth at first but by all accounts there is some science to it and it does work quite well so we're going to get those in um, but it's still going to be a weedy venue yeah it's still going to be a weedy lake it's always been a weedy lake and it's always going to be a weedy lake and quite frankly if you put off by that then fish somewhere else you know because we're not we're just not going to be able to make it so it isn't isn't yeah isn't a weedy venue. We I, I, I get stuff. it yeah, yeah we can you, deal with the surface stuff we've got the make it more fishable to, exactly we can with the new weed boat we've got we can buzz around it and clear the surface stuff out now and we will do that if we need to but yes yeah, a weedy venue just make sure you fish appropriately 
make sure you've got decent decent strength line on i would go as high as 20 odd pound you're not casting very far on here so make sure you've got decent tow rope on there um, make sure that you're fishing chods or solid bags things like that um, unless you can find some of the clear spots and there are clear spots in there but if not just fish it as a weedy venue and the results are there to be seen you know there are guys fishing it appropriately and they do get they do get the results so yeah that's yeah so in short um we're going to do a bit to manage it we've learned some stuff this year uh, but ultimately just make sure you fish accordingly you know and obviously now you take it on as well you've also started your own bait range mm. um the Wixty carp lake bait range which you have a, do have a sponsored angler jake which is you'll see him in this video prior because i would yep. have put in clips and photos do you suggest that that is the bait that people would use i know obviously it makes perfect business sense for yourself to for more people to buy your bait yeah but speak of the devil <laughs> <laughs> there he is Jake now um is that the bait that you know really works here has anyone else come down here with a bait that's not from mm. your your range and done well or is it yeah it's a, it's i always feel like um i always feel like a bit of a salesman when i answer this one but uh in short if you want to catch on here then fish our pellet and fish our boiling and that's not just because you have to buy it from us and it makes us some money the main reason is is because this pellet and this boilie comes from the same place where we got our fish so and this when i talk about opportunity this is a great example we had no um we had no plans to introduce our own bait range when we, when we started this venture um, Lord knows I don't have the time for it, um, but when where you get the bait, where you get the fish from, when he also does his own, it's not even a bait range; it's the feed that that he rears his fish on. When he says to you, "Oh, we can do you this at a, at a pretty good price," and it, it just makes perfect sense. We can we can bring the feed to the venue that the fish would instantly recognise, pass it on at a decent price. You know, so then it just leads into opportunity. So then, like, okay, so what can we do? We've got we've got Jake, who you've already mentioned, who who sort of sold his soul to this place anyway. So we've got him in. We've 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 branded the bait. We've we have tweaked it a little bit. You know, it's not entirely how it came from, yeah. from the fish farm. We have tweaked it a little bit. Um, we've so we've started our own our own uh, target twenty bait range, and we've we've had Jake fishing. We sort of see we'll see where it goes, uh, and it's sort of really gone off in its own on its own tangent really because. It fished really well here from from from, from the off. Uh, a lot of guys use other baits, and I'm not saying they're the only baits that work on here. But you know, any decent bait will work on here. But these the fish recognise this bait straight away. But we've had a lot of guys who've taken the bait elsewhere and had brilliant results with it. So now we've actually got a whole customer base who come to us, pick up the bait, and then go and fish somewhere else, which wasn't the original plan. The idea was <laughs> we were going to feed our fish with it. So yeah. that, you know, so that we're we're making a bit more revenue and we're also feeding the fish and they're getting bigger and round it goes and everyone's a winner um, but yeah we've got we've got five or six guys now who don't actually fish this water who have the bait office and go and fish it elsewhere so you know we're um, we're happy to sort of you know to jump at the opportunity so so we're in the early early throes of getting a few guys to start field testing this in different different places and the early results are really really good um, so we're, we're sort of that, that's not a direction we originally planned to go in but you know this is a, it's going that way it's a commercial operation now and and, uh, and and if that's what we need to do because every penny we get from that we can pump back into this place um, so yeah so it's, it's a bit of a happy accident to be yeah. honest but it's um it doesn't have any doesn't have any losers because it catches on here it catches elsewhere and we can offer it at a really good price so if people are interested in getting had their hands on some of your target 20 bait range how do they go about it? Just go on the website. So um, I can't remember what my website is now. Just go on Wicksteed Carp Lake, hyphenated between Wicksteed and uh, Wicksteed like okay. Wicksteed hyphen carp hyphen lake dot co dot uk <laughs> on the spot, um, and you'll find our bait range on there. Um, but if you if you just just Google edge angling now, you'll you won't be long. Can you mail it to people if they want it mailed? We can. We. Look, we'll if you want it, we'll send it to you. You know, if you're local, if you know, we have sort of unofficially said that um, if you, you know, if you're local to this area, when I say local, Northamptonshire, um, then yeah, we, we don't mind driving out to you, or whatever. You know, we're we're in the early throes of getting this sorted. You know, so if you live in Glasgow and you want some, yeah, we'll get it sent up there to you. You know, we'll we'll sort it out. We originally only had it so it would be pick up from from here because we thought it'd only be used at this venue but as it's now starting to grow arms and legs we're sort of 
making it up as we go along on that one. So just get in contact with us. Yeah. Um, it, it's such a good price we can offer you at it, so offer it to you at that adding a bit of postage to it or a bit of fuel or whatever is, is still going to make it, it's still going to be a cheap bait, you know, yeah. a cheap bait that works and there aren't many of those, you know, so it'd be well worth your time. So yeah, get in contact. And, and if, not, if people want it, if they're going to come for a session, how do, will you sort of drop their bait off at the lake for them? Certainly and, will, yeah. So we made, we made it our mission from day one to be, not to be, not to be different, but to just make sure that we're really focusing in on, on customers needs and end of the day if we've got happy customers in our view they'll return so we make a point of putting uh, of, of putting sort of regular um, barbecue events on we're having a bit of a, a social event at the moment so we've had this is our third one well this is the first time we've gone to this length but we've had the barbie out a couple of times we bring hot drinks around to people in the morning and yes we'll bring your bake down to your swim just get yourself here get yourself parked and we'll and we'll bring it down to you you know it's it's, it's simple, simple business really. Look after the customers, make sure they're all happy and they're more likely to return. You know, it's, it's like it's like anything, isn't it? You know, if you yeah. have a bad experience somewhere, you don't tend to go back. So we're we we go into those lengths. You know, we, we really want to look after guys. We are competing in a very uh, competitive market, so yeah, we're trying to do those little bits to, to keep guys happy. With and and other questions as well. I've touched on it. I think about it. Is obviously I've heard over talking yesterday over the barbecue and a bit of a social. People are talking about how people say they can't find it, how they can't find the can't lake. Can't find the lake. Yeah, that's that's always a, it. Was always one that makes us smile. That is, particularly after people have just joined up for the month, and then the first question is, "Where is the lake?" It does, um, I sort of take it for granted that everyone knows where this water is. You know, a lot of us that grew up in Kettering know the back lake at Wicksteed, and uh, most it's, it's normally normally the same story every time. I fished it as a kid. It's almost carbon copy the story. Yeah. I fished it as a kid. It used to be a great tench water. Is it still the same place? And I think as we were, when we were a club, a lot of people joined for the nostalgia, the fact they used to fish this as a, as, as a kid. And then for so many years, you couldn't get on it because it was either a syndicate, um, it, was, uh, it was a club for a little while, then it was just no fishing for a little while. And then people would come and fish it and then they getting bundled off by security. And then people were so pleased to see us reopen it. Um, that a lot of people join for nostalgic reasons. And we do take that for granted a little bit because we do have people coming from further afield who do want to fish the venue, and I just assume everyone knows how to get to it. <laughs> um, so the safest the safest bet for trying to find us is to go onto the website and go down to where the uh, the venue information is and how to get to us, and there's a little link at the bottom there that, that will take you to a YouTube video that literally drives you from the gate all the way through the park. Down and that's to, that's down one of the, the biggest lake. ones I uh, would say. But initially, you want the entrance to Wicksteed Park. Yeah. First and foremost, yeah, and, <laughs> and in fairness to a lot of people who've come for the first time, if you do go on Google, Google tries to bring you in through the industrial estate around the back, and you can get in that way, providing that you can swim, uh, you don't mind getting all your kit wet, and also uh, risking your life on the train track. Yeah. As long as you don't mind all of those things, you can get in that way, but I would strongly recommend coming through the main entrance of Wixley Park, and then follow the signs for the campsite, and once you got to the campsite, if you still can't find us, just give us a ring or a message and we'll talk you in from there. That's, that's your best bet. That's good. Well, I was hoping to get Jake, but he's... Uh, yeah, he's I think he's headed back towards where the tea and coffee is. Yeah. Yeah, not sure. Because uh, Jake's staying for another couple of days. I wanted to just get a bit of an insight from Jake, but... Yeah, we'll give him a, we'll give him a call in a minute, yeah. Get well, here he is. The man, the myth, the legend, that is Jake of Wicksteed Carp Lake. Right then, so, I just want to pick your brain a little, obviously not giving it completely away but for people that are coming down here on their first time what's the best way in your opinion because you do very well on this and people would have seen what you've had you're the only one to have caught on this social so we've had they will see your fish what's the on your opinion what's the best approach that somebody could come come in here to fish for the first time so the best thing i would recommend is have a good walk around the lake find the fish now it can be a bit funny because in the shallow end you can see them but not necessarily catch them but in the deeper end like in the tent swim you can catch them now as to how you would catch them i would 100 percent recommend the target 20 bait range so you've got their boilie you've got their pellet and the particle all the fish i've caught um so that would be three fish this session two last night one the night before have all been on their bait um, so yeah, that's how I would approach this lake if I was first starting out. So, obviously this is a very weedy venue, as 
most people that come here and fish it will know but what sort of methods would you suggest to people you know whether it be a solid bag or chod or something yeah. along those lines what's the best method someone might could could, could approach this yeah lake? yeah so i've caught quite a few methods um now bottom baits is always a funny one because there's crayfish in here now i get really paranoid i like to think if i'm going to sleep on my rods fishing they're going to be fishing all night now if i use bottom baits i'm thinking maybe the bait sunk into the silt and it's going to smell like the silt or it's going to get crayed so definitely recommend fishing popped up so i've caught on roddy rigs i've caught on hinge stiff rigs and chod rigs and that all depends on how bad the weed is and or how bad the silt is i mean at the minute i'm fishing over a lot of silt and there's only a few strands of canadian weed so I'm, i'll choose to use a ronnie rig on a helicopter rig um and it proves pretty effective but again i've used chod rigs over a big bed of weed um but i've also tied a pva bag on the lead and just left it as that yeah um and as for the hinge stiff rig that is for when i want to fish a tight line um because on a choddy you have to fish a slack line so you can sort of fish a semi-tight line on a hinge stiff rig so you get that better indication you can get to the fish quicker therefore being able to net it because you yeah. could get weeded up like we sort of almost had yeah that almost happened morning. this morning yeah yeah so yeah what people come in here and they wander around so your advice would be literally just to find where they are is there without giving too much away is there a pattern to what the fish are doing or you know times of year or that kind yeah, of stuff yeah. absolutely so throughout the year i've been fishing here quite regular um and it's been a bit of a funny one so they started coming out in the in the steps and the island swim always in the evening uh last knockings um regularly for about two months and then after two months it's like they got riggy they got spooked and they moved on so they moved on to the other side of the lake um so they moved on in tony's peg um and then i started doing really well in this peg which is jake's peg um but yeah like you, you would have a walk around here you can see the fish in the shallow end um but it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to feed i mean I've, I've ran around here a lot i've had fish three or four pegs in about two days um and generally i have found the deeper end at the minute does produce bites at night the shallower end doesn't seem to do anything it's like they just go up there and bathe get out the way but at night when the sunlight goes down uh, you can hear them tail flapping jumping out and they do feed like say i've had that bite at about 11 o'clock at night and then i had another run at i think it was about when was it six in the morning six this morning yeah 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 six in the morning so definitely the deeper end um as of at the minute this info is all updated is doing bites compared to the shallow end and as long as you use the you know a good set of bait specifically target 20 that's what i seem to be catching on i'm not just up in their bait because i'm sponsored i'm up in their bait because i genuinely catch on it yeah. like that's just how it is but generally any other baits too would work i mean i've got all sorts of pop-ups different colors i've had brown orange yellow white sort of like a manila so that's pretty much anything can work it's just about whether the fish will want to yeah, feed or not it's a funny one because i've i've blanked on it for a month so my last session i caught one fish and before that i was a month blanking when we had that oxygen crash and i was really really struggling i mean i even went on zig rigs i gave up on bottom baits because my mind was in all sorts of places but yeah i was on zig rigs still not getting any runs so i thought like as i was on the bank for a month you get to see the patrol routes the fish um, and slowly started working out in the shallow end they were coming up to hide and in the deeper end they were starting to jump and normally when fish jump it's a good indication they're feeding because they're cleaning their gill yeah. rakers so that was the decision to move down there and the funny story with that is I fished it uh, Friday night packed up on um, the double swim Friday morning took a picture of the fish went round to the step swim to draw the pegs and out of the blue, I drew the same peg I just packed <laughs> up on, which you wouldn't believe. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's a trundle all the way back round. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's how it is, isn't it? it? That's just luck. Anyone else would have fished that peg and caught. That's what I think. But it's just I'd, that peg doing bites. I, I reckon it's just over there, it's doing bites at the moment. Absolutely. So another one is um, like the style of fishing, like bait application. Now, mm. is heavy baiting or light bait or is it literally just 
whatever's going to be happening yeah, on the day. Yeah. So, you know, you don't want to just come here and fill it in and no. hope it works. In your opinion, is it? You really got to try and gauge what you're going, you know, try and build yeah, a definitely. swim. Yeah, definitely. It's a really funny one for me because in this swim, I was getting up to six to seven fish a night and then the bite time changed and I was getting up to six fish in a day. But that was really, really um, on a low bait scale, that was. Um, that was all on a PVA bag, medium sized PVA bag. Um, and that's all I did. I put a handful of Target 20 boilies around it and the fish come in on it. They come in on it quick. But as, as the bite started to go quiet and the fish got riggy, um, I started introducing a lot more bait. Um, and I think that brought them in more. Did that keep the bites That's coming? That kept them in. So they started coming in on a small parcel of bait, but now they're getting riggy. You've really yeah. got to get them Confident. munching about, picking up the boilies, the pellet, the particle, get them confidently feeding over one spot and then you put three rods on it and you're bound to catch one at so night. yeah so you, in your opinion it would be try and gauge a situation you know don't come in and yeah. fill it in yeah, start yeah. small and if you've noticed you could you've got them try and keep them yeah if you know you're on them like i say you're in the deep end um if you've done your homework on the lake and your revision you know where the fish are all this updated information you can go from now, I mean, how I would approach it now is that I'll put maybe a kilo of particle, kilo of pellet, and a kilo of boilie all over uh, a big area and fish it over three rods on a match to hatch pop-up, or the target 20 pop-ups, the orange pop-ups, the yellow ones or the white ones. So that's how I would approach it. Yeah, it's good. It's a good bit of insight, a good bit of local knowledge, as this man here has, I've been coming down here for the last four years, and he's been here since, and he's put the effort, the time in, hence why Wicksteed Park Carp Lake have taken him on and as a sponsored angler. Yeah. So that was a good bit of insight, Jake. Thank you very much. And I'm sure people that are coming here for the first time would take that information on board. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. If you do what I've just said, bear it all in mind, you'll catch, definitely. Cheers, Jake. <laughs> So for the winner of the Biggest Fish Summer Social 2022 at Wixley Carp Lake in genuine gold plastic, <laughs> the Biggest Fish was £14 caught by Jake himself. Come on, come on Jakey. Round of applause. Thank you. So what's your, uh, what's your takeaway moment from, <laughs> from this weekend? Um, I don't know, actually. You mean the barbecue, yeah? Barbecue, yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just spent most of it sleeping. <laughs> there you have it. Not that far. Okay. Well, anyway, so go and sit down. We need the next person up now. <laughs> so, winner of most fish caught with two carp. No. Oh. Not ropes. Right. Oh. Oh. Totally right. so it would have been what six ropes? Right? Yeah, I had about a dozen. Yeah, so he came second. Uh, yeah. Uh, most fish caught. Uh, the summer social 2022 was also Jake. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. So when you weren't sleeping, how many fish did you catch? Two. Right, and when did you get them? What did you get them on? Well, I actually had three actually no, before the competition. No, that one didn't count. In the competition, I had two. Right. They were um, uh, bloodworm pop-ups. Bloodworm pop-ups. Yeah. yeah. On the, over the pellet. Over the pellet, over the boilie, and the particle. All of which is available on our website. Yeah. <laughs> now, hold on, mate. Hold on. <laughs> Well, hello, that's it. All done. Packed up in the car. Um, I had to it up with half a dozen silvers. And the only two fish to come out were to Jake. Um, yeah, down at Wixty Carp Lake. Brilliant session. As much as I didn't catch carp or anything like that. Had a great time, great social, great bit of banter of all the lads. Yeah, good food, good barbecue, and then breakfast in the morning was spot on. I can't thank Ollie and Mick enough for the social event at um, Wixty Carp Lake. It was awesome time, it really was good good fun. And uh, yeah, me and Donnie Lee gonna go home now. I've got to unload the car. Oh. But yeah, if you like this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. So until the next time, all the best and tight lines. Mm -hmm.